Drafting can be one of the hardest and most unpredictable things in the game. You never truly know what the full potential of a player is, but that's also what makes the draft so exciting. It's fun to look back at past drafts after seeing players well into their careers and seeing who lived to their potentials, became steals, or busts. And with that, you can also re-rank these players and see where they would have gone if you would have known their trajectory over the course of their career. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Hi, it's Matt from Puck Rivals, and today me and Billy are going to be redrafting the 2010 NHL Andrew Draft and finally settling the Taylor versus Tyler debate a decade after Taylor Hall has taken first overall over Tyler Sagan. Here's a look at the results for the top 20 picks in the 2010 draft, and we are going to be re-ranking these top 20. And for our redraft, we took two things into consideration. The best player available based on how good the player's been over their career, and what the team making the pick needs currently. With that being said, let's get into the redraft. I'll be going through picks 20 through 11, and then Billy will be going through our top 10. Let's get started. Starting off at pick number 20, we have Charlie Coyle going to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Coyle has put up 285 points in 570 games played. Coyle moves up 8 spots from his original pick at 28th overall, and over the course of his career has put up 285 points in 570 games played. Coyle is a good depth player that will help a Pittsburgh team that can definitely use it. He's a very useful player and able to play up and down the lineup, both at center or on the wing. He's also shown that he has that clutch team in the playoffs last year with 16 points in 24 games with Boston. At the 20th pick, he'd definitely be a solid choice for Pittsburgh. Now pick number 19, we have Nino Niederreiter going to the Florida Panthers. Now Niederreiter has a pretty big drop of 14 spots from his original pick at 5th overall, and that's partially because he just hasn't lived up to a top 5 pick potential. He is a reliable depth player that can chip in on offense with 290 points in 601 career games, but he's not that top end skill base that can carry a line. Niederreiter can be a depth player for a Florida team that can also play up and down the lineup. He has shown signs of a scoring touch, though he's been pretty inconsistent over his career. Niederreiter is not going to do anything crazy to boost a team, but he is a piece that can consistently put up 40 plus points and around 20 goals. So he'd be a great addition to the Florida Panthers. Moving on to pick number 18, we have Jason Zucker. Zucker moves up 41 spots from his original pick at 59th overall and has put up 255 points in 471 career games. Now what Nashville gets in Zucker is a winger with a scoring touch. For the past few years, he's put over 20 plus goals on a wild team that didn't have a lot of scoring depth. After being traded to Pittsburgh this past year, we saw briefly what he could do when playing with more skilled players by putting up 12 points in 15 games with Pittsburgh. And now, Nashville doesn't have anyone on the level of Crosby or Malkin. Zucker will still be playing with better players than he had the majority of his career, and will add more scoring depth for the Preds. Now at number 17, we have Brock Nelson going to the Colorado Avalanche. The center moves up 13 spots from his original pick at 30th overall. Over the course of his career, Brock Nelson has put up 295 points in 548 games to play. He is a reliable center who can be counted on in all areas, and has an underrated offensive upside. He's only had one season in the past six where he scored less than 20 goals, and in that season he had 19. He would provide even more stability to a strong Avs offense, and is able to chip in offensively and take some pressure off the top line. Now with pick number 16, we have Kevin Hayes going to the St. Louis Blues. Hayes moves up 8 spots from his original pick at 24th overall, and over the course of his career he's gotten 270 points in 450 games. Now in Hayes, the Blues get a big, reliable center that can play in the middle of their lineup. He consistently gets 40 plus points a year, and would be a great addition to an already strong Blues offense. Now he wouldn't put up any crazy numbers, but would be really good in a shutdown role in the Blues. And who doesn't love more depth? With the 15th pick, we have the LA Kings taking defenseman Justin Falk. Now, Falk moves up 22 spots from his original pick at 37th overall. Falk's up 274 points in 628 games. He's an offensive defenseman that can put up some pretty good numbers, and the Kings need to restock defensively after trading away most of their defensive core over the past couple years. A guy like Falk could boost our top four significantly, because right now it's very weak. Drew Doughty can use all the help he can get right now. At pick number 14, we have Mikhail Granlund going to the St. Louis Blues, and he moves back 5 spots from his original pick at 9th overall. He's put up 352 points in 540 games. In Greenland, the Blues get a speedy playmaking winger that can add even more depth to a stacked Blues team. He can produce offensively and play up and down the lineup, and the Blues would be happy to get both him and Hayes in this draft to contribute and make their top 9 even more dangerous. Moving on to pick number 13, where we have Tyler Toffoli going to the Arizona Coyotes. During this actual draft, they are still called Phoenix, but you know, same difference. 
Over the course of his career, Toffoli has put up 300 points and 145 goals in 525 games played. He moves up 34 spots from where he was originally picked at 47th overall. He's a scoring winger that can help an Arizona team that struggles to score no matter what they do. He's capable of scoring 20 plus goals a year and unfortunately hasn't put up the numbers that he could have because he's been on a rebuilding Kings team forgetting Delta Vancouver where he put up 10 points in 10 games before the season was shut down. The Coyotes would be very happy getting someone like Toffoli to add another offensive weapon to their lineup. At pick number 12, we have Brendan Gallagher going to the Anaheim Ducks. The right winger moves up drastically 135 spots from where he was originally picked 147th overall. Now that's a big jump. He put up 173 goals and 334 points in 547 career games. He is a gritty and skilled winger with a nose for the net. And don't take me saying gritty is a negative. He's really good at scoring in tight and is the perfect star where he has the ability to annoy opponents on the other team while also scoring 30 plus goals a year. His small size has proven a non-factor which makes this a no-brainer for the Ducks to take him at 12. Gallagher will look really good on a line in the future with their other skilled prospects like Trevor Zegris. And now onto the 11th pick where we have Jeff Skinner going to the Dallas Stars. Now the scoring wingers put up 258 goals and 465 points in 720 career games. He moves down four spots from his original pick at 7th overall, but that's no slight to his skill. Now it's plain and simple, Jeff Skinner is good at scoring goals. He surprised everyone by making Carolina right after being drafted 7th overall. And then he scored 31 goals that year and won the Calder. Nobody would have predicted that from the 7th overall pick of that year. Now this drop from his real rank isn't a slight to him as a player at all. There are just some very good players in this draft that took longer to develop. Skinner is one of the most pure and effective goal scorers in this draft, and would be a great addition to a Stars team that has struggled with secondary scoring for the past while. So I'm sure they'd be really happy to be able to get him at 11 in this draft. And now that we're done the first half of our redraft, I'm going to pass it off to Billy who's going to close out our top 10. So coming in at 10 for the New York Rangers, we have Jaden Schwartz, who is up plus 4 from his original selection of 14 by the St. Louis Blues. In his career in the NHL, Jaden Schwartz has managed to tally 146 goals along with 364 points in 520 games. He's a quick, talented, and versatile forward who has proven that he can show up when it matters most in the Stanley Cup playoffs. For the Minnesota Wild, selecting at number 9, we have Ryan Johansson. Originally, he was picked 4th overall by the Columbus Blue Jackets, so this sees him fall 5 spots to number 9. In his career, he has scored 144 goals with 442 points and 660 games played. Ryan is a big playmaking center who has the ability to put up points, but does lack consistency. Next up at number 8, going to the Atlanta Thrashers, or Winnipeg Jets, whichever you prefer, is Cam Fowler. Cam Fowler sees his stock rise in this redraft from number 12 up to number 8. He has played 679 games in the National Hockey League, scoring 67 goals along with 301 points. Cam is an all-around defenseman who has great skating ability and is widely considered the second best D-man in this draft class. The seventh pick in this NHL redraft, the Carolina Hurricanes select Frederick Anderson, goaltender. Freddie sees himself climb 180 spots from 187. He has played 369 games in the National Hockey League, collecting 213 wins and a save percentage of 917. Anderson is easily the best goalie in this draft, and goalies don't normally go this high, but since we know for sure Anderson's a surefire starting goaltender, we have Carolina taking him, because during this time, they couldn't really find a starting goaltender after Cam Ward got worse and worse. Next up, at number 6 is the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I'm sure Bolts fans will wish they did make this selection, of Genny Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov sees himself jump 20 spots from 26. He has played 479 games, amassing 120 goals to go with 389 points. Kuznetsov is an elite playmaker with soft hands and the ability to score some goals here and there as well. He has true number one center ability. Could you imagine this 2020 Lightning team with Kuznetsov if they had chosen him instead of Brett Connolly? Nuts, man. Next on the clock at number 5 are the New York Islanders. With the 5th selection, we have them taking John Klingberg. 
offensive defenseman, up 126 spots from 131. Wow, what a steal this pick it was for Dallas. Klingberg's played 425 games, amassing 291 points. John Klingberg is an offensive D-man with a big shot from the point and great skating. This is the number one D-man the Isles have needed for so long, and this would have been right after they had taken John Tavares. Could you imagine? Pick number four belongs to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And to many of you, this may be the biggest surprise of the entire redraft. We have Taylor Hall at number four going to the Blue Jackets. A fall of three from the first overall pick. Now in 627 games, Taylor Hall has managed to score 218 goals with 563 points. A couple reasons that we have him sliding down to number four are he has been injury prone throughout his career. He really has only had one really, really good year that was with New Jersey, and that was the only time he had ever scored more than 30 goals. Taylor Hall is still a first line player, but we've just believed that there are three players that are better than him in his draft class. Speaking of which, at number three to the Florida Panthers, we have right winger Vladimir Tarasenko, up 13 spots. Tarasenko's played 507 games, so 120 less than Taylor Hall, and has 214 goals, just four shy of Taylor Hall, with 428 points. Tarasenko is an absolute elite and pure goal scorer in a goal scorer's NHL. He hasn't scored less than 33 since 2014, and to cap it off, he's had a solid playoff career, including a Stanley Cup. Now moving on to number two, the Boston Bruins. We have been taking right winger Mark Stone, second overall, up 176 spots from 178. What a steal of a pick by Ottawa. Stone's played 449 games in the NHL, totaling 385 points along with 149 goals. Now, why is Mark Stone this high? He is an elite player at both ends of the ice, arguably the league's best two-way forward. He's been a point per game or better the last three years, and that's including being on a pretty bad Ottawa Senators team. And of course, Mark Stone perfectly fits that Bruins style of defensively responsible star players. Mark Stone is the most complete player in this draft. Just thank God the Bruins don't have Stone in real life. Thank God. And last but not least, we have the first overall pick by the Edmonton Oilers. I'm sure it's no surprise to you guys who it is at this point, but it is Tyler Sagan, up one spot from second overall. Sagan's played 741 games, amassing 635 points in that time. Tyler is a number one center who can provide offense. He has been a consistent 70 plus point player throughout his career, and he's been carrying Dallas's offense for years now. In this case, the Oilers would get their number one center and perhaps have a much quicker rebuild than they actually did. And with that selection, that concludes our 2010 NHL redraft. There are a number of elite players in this draft, which made it kind of difficult to rank at some points. Let us know in the comments section how you would order this draft, and stay tuned for some more redrafts coming your way. If you like hockey videos, don't forget to like and subscribe, because that's what we do at this channel. Take it easy, and stay safe out there.